Hello again, brethren, and we are here at this time to calculate the free days and free nights spoken of by Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Um, we will go to the book of Matthew, chapter 12, and we're going we're gonna to start at verses 38. Hear you know what it says. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see thee a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, And even a, an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus Christ is, say, is giving us a clue actually by saying three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But if you realize that the, the, the earth does not have a, a literal heart, he is pointing to the heart of Jonah. So like Isaiah said to us in uh, chapter 28 and verses 10 line upon line precept upon precept we must allow the bible to interpret itself and not assume what is not there so we know that the new testament scriptures were written in greek and if we use the strong's concordance we see that the word heart there that is used in verses 40 is indicative of the heart it means cardia it means the heart with deals with the thoughts and the feelings so we need to go to the book of jonah to identify his thoughts and his feelings at that time that he was in the whale's belly so we're going to go to the book of jonah here to see the condition of jonah's heart while he was in side of the whale so in the book of jonah uh, chapter 1 verses 17 now we see that the lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up jonah and jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights so we need to examine the condition of jonah of jonah's heart or his feelings how he felt while he was in there for three days and three nights to understand what jesus christ is trying to say to us we go to chapter 2 it says then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly so we see the first thing Jonah started to do he started to pray that is one hint two and and said I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice for thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about and thy billows and thy waves passed over me then I said I am cast out of thy sight yet I will look again toward the holy temple the waters compassed me about even to the soul the depths closed me round about the weeds were wrapped about my head so Jonah now is giving us a clue as to what is happening here. He started to pray. That is the first thing he started to do. He started to pray. And we see that in verses 3, he's saying that thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. So we see that Jonah was en en compassed about by floods. All right? The waters, verses 5, the waters compass me about, even, the, even to the soul, the depths closed round about me, and the weeds were wrapped about my head. So he's giving a clue as to what is happening. So he was compassed about by floods, and the weeds were wrapped about his head. He's giving a clue. Now, in relationship to what happened to Jesus Christ, we could begin to have an idea of when these three days and these three nights started. Now, in Bible prophecy, we need to determine what is meant by floods and waters and seas, and we go to 
the book of the Revelations, chapter 17, where we see there is a, a whorish woman nicknamed Babylon the Great, mother of Halos, and she is seated on many waters. She's seated on many waters. So, in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15, these waters are identified. And as it reads, verse 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes, nations and tongues. So, see, we see waters represent people. So, in, a, in, in, in relation to what happened to Jesus Christ with his three days and his three nights, we have a, now a clue. We see that Jesus Christ went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And we saw when Jonah ended up in the whale's belly, the first thing he started to do, he started to pray. And then Jonah was praying. He said that he was compassed about with waters. And we see that these waters represent people, nation, kindred, and tongue in prophetic language. So, to rightfully calculate the three days and the three nights that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is talking about, we see that it, his three days and his three nights actually started in Gethsemane. He was not talking about being dead in the in the tomb because he, he did not spend three days in the tomb, but he spent three days and three nights. Uh, it began when he started to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane and then when the soldiers came to get him he was surrounded by these men these soldiers so and if you calculate correctly we'll see that the first night was when in, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane is the first night and then in the morning we see that he was crucified that is a night and a day already and then we see the evening of the Sabbath drawn, that is another night. And then we see the morning of the Sabbath came, which is another day, which is already two days, two nights. And then we see the evening of the first day of the week begin at the sunset. And then we see the morning of the first day of the week when Jesus Christ was resurrected. So these are the three days and the three nights which he is identifying in the scriptures. Um, thank you and